Now, they might have different names, ISIS, Boko Haram, Hamas, Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah. But all of them were driven by the same hatred and bloodthirsty fanaticism. And all of them seek to destroy our freedoms and to impose on all of us a violent medieval tyranny. Governments like to pride themselves on their ability to protect their people. Yet the actions of dedicated killers in France, coupled with a growing cancer of butchery around the world in the name of God, has come to a flashpoint where life as we know it is about to once again change, whether we like it or not. It's a pleasure to welcome back to Midpoint a former decorated career officer in the Central Intelligence Agency who served as, among other things, a former station chief. Gary Bernson joins us. Gary, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Pleasure to be with you, Ed. Gary, let's begin right now with the terrorists themselves. As, as an intelligence individual here, someone who's been at the ground level, the French say that they couldn't keep track of these individuals because they simply don't have the manpower. They don't have the wherewithal to do it. Wait a minute. That speaks something's wrong there because a world that knows these killers are out there and we don't have the manpower. Why and how was this allowed to happen? Who screwed the pooch? Europe has allowed massive immigration, and for France in particular, from the Middle East and from North Africa. There are over 5 million Muslims in France. There are hundreds of no-go zones where police won't even enter, and Islamic councils are, are sort of leading those people in there. This is even taking place in Sweden. There are dozens and dozens of no-go zones where the police won't go. Europe lost control of its immigration, has allowed these, these, these platforms to be, can be created out of indigenous, or not indigenous, but foreign populations of Muslims, and the terrorists are operating from these platforms. And, and Europe is at grave risk. There are thousands and thousands of individuals in Europe that have been trained in terrorist training camps across the Middle East that have come back. And, and today, we witness, sadly, uh, you know, additional loss of life you know, from hostages uh, you know, in, in resolving an incident with, with these types of terrorists. Okay, now here's where one of these, these incidents come in where we have to ask ourselves exactly what we're talking about here because you just mentioned the no-go zones in Europe. Absolutely correct. Where Islamic councils are basically running these places, these areas, cops won't go there. That is also correct. Wait a minute. We have people, we had one here yesterday from the Council on American or, or on, uh, on CARE, rather, who said that Muslims are good people. There's most of them are good. They want to assimilate. They want to create themselves as part of a society here. But if we're told that there are Islamic councils here who are keeping them out, Gary, do you see what I'm talking about here? We're hearing from one side that there are people who want to become parts of community, yet you and the intelligence community tell us that there's governments, basically, who won't let the cops in, whether they're French cops, American cops, cops Swedish cops, or whatever. Where's the reality in this situation? We've had greater assimilation in the United States. France and much of Europe has not had such assimilation. And they feel like they're foreigners in that society. They have had riots and burned thousands of cars. I mean, the French are in a, they are in a serious, they have a serious problem now. They're going to have to combat them. And the problem, additionally, Ed, Ed, is they don't, as you stated, there are so many there that they lack the capacity to surveil them all. They, were, they may have looked at some of these, they may have looked at one of the two brothers for a while, but since he wasn't doing anything that they considered operationally, they moved resources to someone else. They have... When you lose control of your borders, you lose control of your country. All right. Let's, I want to leave the border issue here to the side for just a moment because I want to focus a little bit more on what you just said. Are you then telling us that it's your experience that with regard to intelligence that it is a, there is a huge difference? There's a notable difference then between the Islamic communities in Europe and the Islamic communities in America, who runs them, who they may be harboring as potential terrorists. I would say that the situation is much worse in Europe. However, there are Islamic fundamentalists that are in the United States that have operated here, that have said that they weren't fundamentalists, then they disappear, and then they're you know, running major, or they're, they're major positions within Hamas. This happens all the time. The vast majority of Muslim Americans are loyal people. However, there's been penetration in the United States as well. There are militants that are here that are operating. There, look, when you look at, at an organization like the Muslim Brotherhood, most people forget that, that Morsi, who was a major leader there, was recruited into the Muslim Brotherhood when he was a student at UCLA. They're here. They're organizing among us as well. 
The problem is greater in Europe. If you were to look at England, let's go to London just for a minute. There's over 2,000 people that MI5 has identified in the general area of London that have been trained in terrorist camps. MI5 has their hands full covering them. There was a book written called Londinistan that sort of talks about these issues there. Another book called Menace in Europe, uh, probably about seven years ago by a former CIA analyst that talked about the problems in the Netherlands. This is a, a we're, in, we're in a real difficult spot right now. All right, now you just mentioned MI5, oddly enough, and I'm just seeing a report that's flashed across my desk which talks about MI5, the lead, the boss of MI5 is saying that Al Qaeda terrorists are planning mass casualty attacks against the West. Is this anything new? Well, it, it's, it's unique that he's even making those statements. The MI5 leader doesn't go public all that often. I'd be very concerned by him making those statements. And it sort of reminds me of the summer before, you know, uh, 2001. Uh, so the fact of the matter is, is we need to redouble our efforts. We need to be committed. If you see something, say something. We need the population to support the security forces. We are in a battle of civilizations, whether or not our administration, the Obama administration, wants to admit it. Individuals will, that will not recognize the fact that we are fighting Islamic extremists, Islamic terrorists, are useful idiots for the other side. All right. Now, I want to just give you a little bit more on this because I'm getting a little more from the MI5 boss, Andrew Parker. He says that, and I'm reading this as it's coming across, the U.K. faces the threat of complex and ambitious plots by extremists who wanted to cause large-scale loss of life by targeting transport networks and iconic landmarks. He says that although secur uh, security agencies are trying, they will try our utmost. We know that we cannot hope to stop everything. This we've heard all before. Gary, you've been on the ground here. You know how these people operate. You know how the intelligence community operates. Let's take the gloves off for a second here right now. Let's pretend that we have that opportunity to do that. What is it that European governments need to do, and then tying that in, what is it the American government needs to do right now to do something to perhaps, if we catch one out of ten, let's try to catch two out of ten? They need to have policies where individuals who have immigrated to their countries were formerly members of terrorist organizations, they need to expel them, imprison them, and expel them. They need to deny them citizenship. They need to clear the space of militancy. In the United States, if you immigrate to the United States and you write that you were never a member of a terrorist organization and we find out that was true, we have to expel you. You need to enforce the law. And laws are not being enforced by governments because they want everyone to love them. And, and, and so we need to enforce the law. That's the first thing that we need to do. And it's not being done in the United States and it's not being done in Europe. With regard then to that wanting everybody to love us, and I believe you're speaking to what a lot of people have talked about, the political correctness of the United States government, the political correctness of so many people. We have an administration that is afraid to use the word terrorism. Sometimes they're afraid to use the word Islamic or Muslim. Is it not time that whether it's the president, a Republican, a Democratic senator, whomever it is, and the media, that if there is a connection, we need to tell the American people the truth and stop trying to hide behind this veil of PC. And I'm saying PC because I could go a lot farther in saying something else here, but that's the best thing for broadcast. This administration, the Obama administration, can't put the words Islamic and terrorism in the same sentence. And uh, the Egyptian president, al-Sisi, didn't have a problem saying that this week. Other leaders across the Middle East, like King Abdullah, and, and uh, uh, in, in, in Jordan or the religious authority in um, Saudi Arabia have no problem saying that these individuals and ISIS and others are heretics and they need to be destroyed. But you've got the United States government that can't say it. It's just, it's just shocking. If you can't define an enemy, you're not going to fight it. And, 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 and the fact is, is that, you know, the, the lexicon has been changed by this administration for P, the reasons of political correctness, as you've stated. And, and, and they have not developed a strategy for battle. We are in a battle of civilizations. We have to start to act like we're in this fight, and we have to confront our enemies. If not, they will kill many, many more of us in very bad ways. All right, Gary, i got to back up. We're going to back up just a little bit here because everybody is hot and everybody is emotional today, and I think it's, it's there for a reason. But let's look at America. We've said this before. There are... Muslims in America who are peaceful people, 
who are part of society, who are our friends, our neighbors, and our family. There are people in this country who do not want to pick up a Kalashnikov and kill somebody for putting out a cartoon. But what we're talking about here right now is a groundswell of hate from that side, from the extremist side, who's now going to force people like you, me, and everybody else listening to this program to perhaps hate the people that don't deserve to be hated. They're not part of it. How do we then ferret out the rodents, the cockroaches, without then hurting the good people? I would say this, that first off, Americans need to recognize that Muslim Americans are in the CIA and the FBI and are frequently at the pointy end of the spear in fighting for the American Constitution and the people of the United States. Where there has been a failure is a political failure in America. Most Islamic groups have not been able to step forward and confront politically Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and others because they're afraid. And, and what you saw, the attack that we saw in France on the, uh, the cartoonists in that magazine and the murder all of them is evidence that these individuals do not respect civilized behavior or law and will murder people. But we need the, com the Islamic community in America to step up. We must have them helping us only by enlisting them and, and enlisting moderate Muslims around the world can we rid the world of this scourge. Let's take on one other tack here, because what happened in Paris, what happened in France, certainly showed that more investigative processes are necessary, certainly showed that there are perhaps more people that need to get involved, but we're always talking about intelligence, finding out who the bad guys are, even perhaps looking into mosques, finding out where they are. Have we reached a time in what is becoming a global terrorist war against society, where we in America, people here have to realize that we're going to lose some civil liberties. We're going to have some of them dented, regardless of what happens, that the only way to destroy this enemy is, and boy, it, it even pains me to say this, that we're going to have to bend some of the civil liberties that we appreciate and we deserve. Well, I think, Ed, we, we haven't even started to take the fight to them abroad in as an aggressive manner that we could. The gloves are still on. We need to launch a very aggressive effort against ISIS and Al-Qaeda abroad with allies. We need to use, we need to fight ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and this Islamic hatred and ideology like we did communism. We need to use all instruments of American power to do this. And that means soft power, you know, pointy hard power, you know, propaganda, information operations, all of these things have got to be done together and, 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 and make sure that we cooperate together and work with our allies in this fight. But it's not just, you know, maybe denting some civil liberties at home. We're, we haven't even started with the fight abroad. And, and we're fortunate in America because we don't have a significant indigenous population here that's attacking us from within the United States. We have threats here, but we have, but the, the Europeans have threats you know, 10 to the third power worse. They are really at risk here. And so we need to take the fight out of the U.S. and get them where, where secular states are collapsing and these ungoverned zones are, have been created. This is where the terrorists are working. This is where they're organizing training. And we've got to go after, we've got to identify and eliminate their leaders as quickly as they can produce them. We are in a multi-decade war and conflict with extreme Islamic Salafist jihadists. And people who have no concept of time, because as far as they're concerned, they're going to go ahead and they would continue this war for centuries, and it would just be another day to them. Gary, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Great conversation. Be safe. I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, Ed. All right, take care. Break, and we return with a very personal response to the attacks in France from a Muslim who seeks to have a voice heard and do what she can to stop the killing.